Uh, hi everyone, welcome along to our press conference today. Uh, for those of you joining us online, welcome to you too. Uh, my name is David McNeil, I'm your coordinator today. Uh, well, uh, as probably most of you know, uh, the Olympics were due to start this week, in fact, uh, before being derailed by the COVID crisis. Uh, and the organization Human Rights Watch uh, has taken this opportunity to come to the FCCJ and discuss a very disturbing report uh, alleging that there has been widespread physical, uh, sexual and verbal abuse of children uh, and child athletes in Japan. Um, it's a large report, it's 67 pages long, uh, and the title is, I was hit so many times I could not count. Uh, it uh, categorizes the abuse of child athletes in Japan uh, and documents Japan's history of corporal punishment or what we call taibatsu in Japan in sports and finds abuse in training throughout uh, Japanese schools, federations and elite sports. Uh, I've just been talking to uh, Kobayashi-san, one of today's speakers, and she has pointed out that since 1983, 121 children have been killed uh, playing judo uh, in this country and one of the aims of her association has been to reduce that uh, to, uh, to nearly zero. Uh, Human Rights Watch wants, the recommendation is the establishment of a Japan Center for Safe Sport, uh, an independent administrative body which would uh, address child abuse in sport and ensure reporting and tracking of complaints, establish remedies for athletes and parents, and deter child abuse by identifying and decertifying abusive uh, uh, coaches. So uh, I'll get out of the way and just introduce my speakers. The first one, of course, is well known to the FCCJ. That's uh, Doi-san, Kanai Doi. She is the Japan Director of Human Rights Watch. Uh, the second speaker is uh, Keiko Kobayashi. Uh, she is uh, with the Japan Judo Accident Victims Association, which campaigns uh, against child abuse in the sport and represents families who have been, uh, who have uh, uh, children who have suffered abuse in the sport, including incidentally her own son, which she will talk about. And then the third speaker is uh, Takuya Yamazaki. He's a sports lawyer and executive committee member of World Players Association. Uh, can you switch off your mobile phones if you haven't already done so, please, just to avoid disturbing the speakers. Doi-san, yoroshiku Thank you very much. Uh, greetings, everyone. My name is Kanai Doi, Japan Director for Human Rights Watch. Um, human Rights Watch is one of the largest global human rights organization with its headquarters in New York. We work, we, uh, we monitor human rights situation of more than 100 countries around the world. On July 20th, ahead of the one year countdown of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics and Paralympics Games, Human Rights Watch released a 67 page report titled, I was hit so many times I can't count abuse of child athletes in Japan. This report documents Japan's history of corporal punishment in sport, known as taibatsu in Japanese, and found that child abuse is still rampant in sports training throughout Japanese schools, federations, and elite sports. Human Rights Watch Sports and Human Rights Team has reports has done reports on Olympics in the past for Beijing 2008, London 2012, Sochi 2014, and Brazil 2016. Human Rights Watch regularly engage with sports bodies like FIFA and the IOC to engage them to adopt human rights policies. While the topic of human rights Sorry, while the topic of child abuse in sport today is a global problem, we chose to focus on Japan for 2020 because the Olympics and Paralympics are coming to Japan. And we knew, and every Japanese know, unfortunately, that corporal punishment, no one as Taibatsu, has been prevalent in Japanese sports. Youth sports bring many benefits and can contribute to a lifetime uh, benefit in terms of health and well-being. However, this Human Rights Watch new report uh, shows that abuse, 
Kaibaks in particular, are still rampant in both grassroots and elite sports. We spoke directly to more than 50 athletes, many of whom experienced taibatsu, along with verbal and sexual abuse. We also conducted an online survey of 757 athletes from more than 50 sports in 45 prefectures from March to June of this year. Out of these 757 respondents, 381 respondents were 24 or younger. These are not just elite, 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 uh, elite athletes, but also from grassroots sports. We interviewed parents, academics, child protection experts, lawyers, government officials, and sports federation leaders. We spoke to team managers and coaches who experienced abuse as children. Some of, them are, some of them are committed to change these practices and make sports safe for the next generations. The testimonies of those who spoke to in the report are very shocking. The report title is, I was hit so many times I cannot count. This was taken from a testimony by an elite athlete in his 20s who experienced regular and repeated taibatsu by his high school coach in Western Japan. He said, the coach would often slap us. It was normal for him to punch us in the stomach and kick us. He often threw players like in judo. This would happen in many practices, but not all. When a player would make a mistake in a play, the coach would slap or punch or kick or throw the player. This coach physically abused me countless times. I would estimate more, maybe 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 times. Once he punched, he would hit several times. He didn't stop after only one time. We have used pseudonyms, including this athlete, because in many cases, they did not want to shame the coaches who abused them. Because those coaches mistakenly believed beating and verbal abuse would create champions. Abuse we documented includes punching, slapping, kicking, or striking with objects. Out of 381 young respondents uh, of our survey, 19% indicated they experienced punching, slapping, kicking, or striking with objects. Another feature was excessive or insuff insufficient food and water. Out of the 381 young respondents to our survey, 24% said that uh, they, are, they were forced to eat excessive amount of food, and then 7% said they were not provided enough food or water. Another um, experience athletes has, sh has shared with us was they were forced to train when they were injured or punished with excessive training. 22% of young uh, athletes said so. And also cutting or shaving hair as a punishment was also prevalent. 6% of young respondents experienced this. Abuse by older teammates, senpai, was also common. Each of these were sections in this report. For athletes who were assaulted, sexually abused, or harassed by coaches, Many are suffering from depression, physical disabilities, and lifelong trauma as a result. Our findings about the system that allows these abuses are, one is that Japan's reform announced in 2013 was far short of international and Olympic standards. And even so, they have not been implemented. Another is that there is no comprehensive tracking of child athlete abuse in Japan. No one is even bothering to count the number of abuse complaints or cases. There is a poor articulation of legal rights of athletes and the legal responsibilities of sports organizations. Athletes do not understand their, in, their rights and so are, fear, so are fearful to report abuse. What reporting system there are, they are largely inaccessible to young athletes. 
there is a lack of victim support inf infrastructure and a culture of impunity for abusive coaches. Of child athlete interviewees who experienced abuse, all but one report, uh, sorry, all but one reported that there were no one consequences for the coach. In sum, our findings indicate that if you are a child or athlete being abused by a coach in Japan, you would struggle to report the abuse to sports federations or the government and get assistance. And you, if you did, it would probably end your career in sport. While the 2020 games now delayed for a year due to the pandemic, Human Rights Watch is calling on Japan to take decisive action and to lead in tackling this global crisis of athlete abuse in sport. Among others, we recommend the Japanese government should explicitly, explicitly ban any form of, of abuse as a coaching technique, and then establish a Japan Center for Safe Sports, an independent administrative body tasked solely with addressing child abuse in sport. This body should have the res responsibility to create and maintain standards for athlete protection and should serve as the central authority for investigating abuse claims and punishing abusive coaches. In Japan, society started to pay attention to child abuse, or kodomo no gyakutai, in the past decades, and policymakers have started reform to respond to this child abuse crisis. This reform started from abuse in home, but it has not reached yet to sports. Well, we have not been eradicated abuse, but made significant policy and social norm changes in the past decades in the areas such as child abuse in home, taibats and ijime bullying at school, and harassment at work. When I was a child, Taibat's corporal punishment at school and at home were normal and everywhere. When I was a young worker 20 years ago, verbal abuse, pressure from to work for almost 24 hours, now no one adds power harassment, was just a norm. But policy reform changed the decades long, decades long norms and values in these areas. So I would like to conclude by saying that with the energy and the international attention Tokyo 2020 Olympics and Paralympics bring to Japan, we can change, we can kick abuse out of sport. After one, after one year when Tokyo 2020 starts, I wish Japan will be proud of its reform to protect its own children from abuse in sport and embrace this reform as an important and lasting legacy of Tokyo 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doi-san. Kobayashi-san, onegaishimasu. Hello, my name is Kobayashi of the Japan Judo Accident Victims Association. And my son was a member of the judo club at his junior high school. しかし、when my son was in the third year of junior high school, the coach of the judo club advised that he could recommend my son for a high school based on his high judo abilities. Uh, however, my son said no to this recommendation and decided instead to go to a different high school. But then the coach used judo techniques on him at the ju uh, dojo or the judo hall and hurt my son. <laughs> So using a choke hold, which is a judo uh, technique, the coach strangled my son twice, uh, strangled his windpipe twice, which made him very dizzy. He then threw him to the floor in that state, causing him to suffer massive bleeding in the brain. So 
So mir miraculously, uh, the life of my son was saved through surgery. However, his brain is still severely damaged. So at the time, the police did file papers uh, to charge the coach on in uh, of inflicting bodily injury. However, the prosecutor dropped these charges and they did not indict. And the reason for this is that they said, well, if it happens in the dojo, wearing judo clothes and using judo techniques, then we cannot distinguish between what is judo and what is a crime. So both the Board of Education and the All Japan Judo Federation dismissed the abuse which I suffered as just having been an accident of bad luck. The perpetrator was not punished at all, and in fact, he still works as a junior high school teacher and still continues to coach judo. In Japan, there are records of the abuses that were committed in the United and these records now show that 121 uh, such students have lost their lives. However, this number does not even include those deaths which occurred outside of schools, such as those which occur at regular dojos. And on top of this, there has been absolutely no research done in Japan on the total number of children who have incurred disabilities as a result of or through judo. And this is because Japan has long dismissed such cases as, in my case, as just being an accident of bad luck. I want to know about judo France, Egyptian, Australia, America, and judo leaders and members of I wanted to know about the cases of judo accidents in other countries. So I myself contacted the judo federations and officials in other countries, including France, the UK, Australia, and the United States. So and through this, I found out that no child had died in any of these countries in judo for at least the last 20 years. Through this, I also learned that in these other countries, there are solid measures in place so that judo can be taught safely. In Japan, judo accidents continue to occur even now. Last year, another fifth grader died. And a fourth grader also became seriously disabled. A number of children who are living with developmental disabilities have also suffered even further disabilities on top of this as a result of such cases. By learning from the policies which are in place in other countries, it is possible to teach children judo safely in Japan as well. I strongly believe that it is possible to reduce the number of children dying in judo in Japan also to zero. Thank you for giving me time to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Kobayasan. Um, Kobayasan, would you mind just saying, if you don't mind, uh, how old is your son now? Uh, 
今、えー、15歳の時に怪我をして今16年あ15年経って30歳ですそれもでも一生障害というのは一生抱えていかなければいけません非常に重い障害です So my son was 15 at the time of the accident. 15 years have passed since then, so he is now 30 years old.、Mm. However, the disabilities he is living with are very severe, and he will be living with them、uh, for his entire life. Thank you. That's a tragic story.、Um, Yamazaki san, o n e g a i s h i m a s Thank you.、Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Taki Yamazaki.、Um, uh, I'm a sports lawyer.、Uh, I've been working for the sports industry for more than 20 years,、uh, mainly representing players. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank、um, Human Rights Watch、uh, for this initiative.、Uh, it's really kind of a historic、uh, project. And the,、uh, the significance of this project is,、um, is that the、um, uh, Human Rights Watch、uh, took this issue as a human rights problem.、Uh, you know, very few people on the ground、uh, in Japan、uh, are aware that、um, uh, this is a human rights problem. Uh, and the, as you rightly pointed out,、uh, Kanae san,、uh, you know, the, it's been、uh, socially accepted. And the, uh, uh, many parents are even、uh, kind of thankful、uh, for this kind of uh, uh, corporal punishment. s I think the, the, the real problem here is,、um, uh, is that the, uh, uh, we have uh, accepted uh, this practice. And the, um, uh, this is due to our culture or social norm. Uh, or, uh, you know, I would say,、um, hierarchical culture、uh, in Japan. And,、um, and actually,、uh, I have met uh, uh, you know, many kind of coaches、uh, during my career or sports lawyer's career,、uh, but the,、uh, they don't really have、um, kind of a malicious、uh, intent. You know, they just want, want to, you know, they, they are just、uh, keen on developing a good children or good players. And that, that makes it really kind of complicated. So,、um, but the, I, be, I think that the,、uh, this report is、uh, not aiming to、uh, criticize any particular person.、Uh, this is to encourage、uh, all the people to make a change, make a real change,、uh, which we have failed so far、uh, to take advantage of this opportunity、uh, one, year, uh, ahead, one year before the,、um, the Olympics. So, the problem is、uh, what we should do、uh, moving forward.、Uh, I think we need to、uh, do two things. So, one is, the,、um, uh, as was suggested in this report by Human Rights Watch,、uh, one is to establish an effective remedy uh, where uh, child or,、uh, children or、uh, stakeholders can report、uh, the abuse. And the, uh, uh, the effective protection、uh, of the、uh, reporters is absolutely necessary. So we can refer to the,、uh, the, some of the best practices in、uh, foreign countries like、uh, US、uh, Safe Sports Center or something like that. So Human Rights Watch uh, uh, you know,、uh, rightly pointed out that uh, uh, we need to、uh, have established some kind of a、uh, Japan Center for、uh, Safe Sports,、uh, which I、uh, strongly agree. And, but the other、uh, important thing、uh, we need to do uh, is to、um, uh, have a dialogue on the ground、uh, to make a real change. So, due to the hierarchical relationship,、uh, it's been absolutely difficult for people, especially for children or for pa even parents or、um, uh, management people of the、uh, federation to say that the,、uh, oh, it's, it has to change uh, to the uh, established. Uh, coaches. Uh, you know, there are many established coaches, and they, they are well respected, and therefore、uh, it's really、uh, difficult to say something against the coaches. And actually, they are, you know, in a sense, really good in bringing up children. Uh, however, uh, you know, the methodology is wrong, right? So、um, uh, the, the way they are doing is、uh, not accepted anymore. So, we need to have that kind of a notion, and we need to have a courage、uh, to say that the,、uh, uh, we need to make a change, a real change. And the, in order to do this, we need to, have,、uh, we need to create the atmosphere where we can have a, a kind of a positive dialogue to talk about this issue.、Uh, this is you know, actually、uh, difficult under this, the Japanese culture, but、uh, I believe we can change.、Uh, it might take time. But now is a really good chance to do it. So I would like to encourage all of the people, including myself,、uh, 
uh, to have a courage to listen to others with a mutual respect, and the uh, uh, and the uh, uh, and the uh, we we need to understand uh, that the uh, this type of practice uh, has to be abolished, and the, uh, this is absolutely harmful for children. Although uh, many of the established coaches uh, are just keen on bringing up uh, good children, uh, but uh, the, the way uh, they are doing is absolutely harmful. So uh, this is something which we need to be aware of. So that's a really important thing. So, uh, and also I would like to point out, uh, highlight another uh, interesting movement uh, in the global sports, uh, named, uh, named uh, Business and Human Rights in Sports. So Human Rights Watch has been really uh, active on this field. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on the executive board uh, of the World Press Association. World Press Association is a member of Center for Sports and Human Rights. Uh, so for FIFA or IOC, that type of uh, international federations now are really keen on uh, you know, uh, complying, complying with the um, uh, basic principles of the uh, business and human rights. So uh, there is a um, uh, you know, principle uh, of business and human rights made by United Nations. So IOC, uh, FIFA, and the Tokyo Olympic 2020 organizing committees are, uh, have already uh, declared that the, uh, uh, you know, they, have, they, will be, they will be in line with the um, uh, uh, principles, uh, basic principles of business and human rights. So in order to realize the value of human rights on the ground, we need to have an effective dialogue. So stakeholder engagement is absolutely the key uh, to realize this notion. So however, uh, as I said, uh, under this culture, under this Japanese culture, what is missing is a, a, a dialogue. So uh, under this hierarchical relationship, uh, you know, senior people can control everything. And the, uh, uh, all of the you know, kind of a, you know, non-senior people or non-management people uh, cannot have a say uh, in the decision-making process. So uh, by taking advantage of this opportunity, I'd like to encourage all of the stakeholders in sports uh, to uh, establish an effective dialogue where we can have a, uh, where we can talk about the, uh, the what is the good for children. So that is absolutely necessary. And the, uh, if we have an uh, effective uh, dialogue on the ground, uh, I believe we can make a change. Thank you. Thanks very much, Yamazaki-san. Um, there was a case, wasn't there, just I'll back to the first question, two, two years ago when uh, an American football player, if you recall, uh, uh, carried out an illegal tackle on another player. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the foreign reporters in Japan were quite surprised by the amount of attention that that story got because it didn't seem like a huge story and I remember writing about it and saying well this shows that this issue is um, has touched a nerve in Japanese society um, because of the problem of bullying in sport and a lot of us sort of seem to think that that was a watershed moment two years ago do you, do you think it was that American yeah. football incident? It was absolutely um, a good opportunity to remedy uh, the problem however um, uh, that problem was used uh, for a political purpose, so which is uh, you know really shame to me. Uh, so there have been many scandals actually. So uh, uh, many of the uh, uh, you know corporal punishments has been highlighted uh, over the last uh, ten years, I think, uh, especially in 2013, uh, you know where uh, when uh, uh, young basketball players uh, committed suicide. Mm. Uh, however. Um, uh, you know, due to the again, due to the hierarchical relationship or hierarchical structure, no one can really say to the established coaches that yeah, we need to make a change. So uh, what happened after that was that uh, uh, you know they said they uh, actually said that, oh, uh, we we're gonna take zero tolerance approach for any type of uh, physical abuse or corporal punishment. However, uh, they didn't set up an effective remedy uh, to help uh, to protect children. So they just say, or they, you know, they just pretend to you know, remedy uh, the problem. But however, uh, you know, they actually didn't think that yeah, it's not really 
uh, you know, bad thing. Mm. So uh, it's sometimes needed. So that's a re kind of a real notion uh, on the ground. Mm. So that's the kind of a root of the problem. Mm. Uh, and did I understand you correctly? You said Taibatsu is not banned. There's no law banning Taibatsu. Is that right? Uh, it's illegal. It's, it's illegal. illegal. It's oh. violence. Yeah. 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 In so fact, I mean, uh, very recently there was a, a legal reform to mm -hmm. express, explicitly ban uh, Taibatsu mm -hmm. in some areas, mm -hmm. but it doesn't explicitly explicitly refers to sports. Ah. But uh, Interpretation of the law is that it's prohibited everywhere. Okay. Yeah. So the problem is the interpretation of the laws. So uh, it's been uh, intentionally, you know, kind of blurred or the, you know, vague by the management people. So because um, you know the many people want to protect the established coaches, or they don't have a really a courage to say something against the established coaches. So that is why they, uh, you know, their interpretation has been really vague. Right. Yeah. So, so that's why one of the recommenda main recommendations of the of Human Rights Watch is that the, the, that the Japanese government needs to make explicit in their laws that their uh, taibatsu is prohibited in sports too. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Well, uh, we have 35 minutes. Sorry, 25 minutes for questions. So let me uh, open it up to the floor. Anybody uh, would like to ask a question? Please uh, give your name and your organization and um, uh, ask away. Andy Sharp, my guess you Thank you for coming and giving your presentation. Much appreciated. I'm Andy Sharp from the Nikkei Asian Review. Um, just a quick question. Obviously, the timing of this report is because of the Olympics um, ahead of that. I understand that. But as you all know, there are abuses in sports across the world. We had the US gymnastics situation. I hear about Canadian junior ice hockey is really, really bad, for example. And there's many other cases. So. How would you compare Japan to other countries around the world in terms of the way it treats its children during sports training in terms of, and, you know, and what is the level of abuse compared with other countries in the world? Um, maybe Doi-san can answer that one best. Yeah. And then also Yamagata, <laughs> he can also uh, sure. answer to that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and as I, I said in the speech, uh, I think it is a global problem. And then also Human Rights Watch is also currently dealing not only with Japan uh, situation, but also situation ex in US, um, Haiti, Afghanistan, and so on. So um, I wouldn't pretend that this is a uniquely Japanese problem. Um, having said that, um, what uh, to me what is striking is the lack of uh, systematic response to this situation. As, uh, as Yamazaki Sensei just now said, that uh, there is uh, there was there has been uh, statements that their uh, corporal punishments are prohibited, and then they have to uh, eradicate. However, for, for for such a long time, there is really no systematic response to um, for the laws or for the uh, for the organizations for remedies and so on. And then also there is absolutely a shocking. Uh, lack of efforts to track cases. So uh, it is uh, Human Rights Watch tried hard to compare the tendency, whether the abuse is in decline or it is in increase uh, in the past you know, 10 years, for example. But we were not able to do so uh, because there is no, uh, no comprehensive or comparable da data. Uh, and then uh, we found so many uh, abuses still happening in recent years, we couldn't conclude that it is in decline. Um, so um, I would I would say that there, uh, in the case in the case of Japan, uh, the uh, efforts of authorities to address this uh, problem has been lacking, and then that needs to be addressed in the next one year. So if I may add uh, something, um, I think yeah, it's a global problem, and the uh, the the reason why uh, it's been a global problem is because um, uh, because of um, excessive commercialization uh, of sports uh, industry. So um, uh, you know there you know the the excessive uh, you know commercialization of the sports industry has uh, you know 
the has made a really kind of a you know uh, cruel, crucial uh, you know bad environment for children uh, for you know uh, excessive competitions uh, in the early ages uh, in youth ages so this is a global problem so uh, that is why uh, for example New Zealand uh, you know they uh, you know taken a really interesting approach so they said they said the balance is better. So they are um, uh, doing kind of a uh, campaign or initiative named uh, Balance is Better. So based on the, so the, the approach is um, uh, kind of an evidence-based approach. So uh, based on the uh, scientific, scientific uh, research, uh, you know, excessive training uh, in the early age uh, is really harmful uh, for children. So that's uh, their finding. So, uh, and, and also um, another good example is in Norway. So uh, they prohibit any type of international competitions uh, until the age of 12. So no children can compete in the international uh, competitions uh, until uh, 12 years old. So that type of practice uh, are there. Uh, however, uh, I think the, uh, one of the biggest differences between those countries and Japan uh, is that the, uh, many of the sports uh, in Japan have been played uh, in the context of education. So school sports is really huge. And the uh, teacher have kind of a discretion or autonomy uh, to think about the, what is the, uh, the best way to educate uh, students. So it's not really kind of a player. It's just a student uh, which need, who needs uh, education. So uh, that is a part of the reason why uh, this type of practice has been kind of exempted uh, from uh, you know, criminal laws or relevant laws. Uh, which uh, you know, which clearly says illegal. Uh, you know, this it is illegal uh, based on the Japanese laws. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any more questions on the floor? Dozo. <clears throat> France no eh, Liberation Simbun to eh, Radio France Radio Kyoko no eh, Tokuhai Nishimura to Moshimasu. Eh, Itten no Shitsumon Arimas. Eh, ano, Tatoeba, Gyakutai o Uketeru Kodomo, Atawa, Ano, Gyakutai o Mita, Otonawa, Jido Sodanjo ni Sodan de Kiru, Ano, Shikumi ga Arin de Skeredomo, Sports no Baiwa, Nanika, Onaji Yona Basho wa Arimaska. I am from uh, France Radio. My name is Nishimura. I have one question. In the case of children who are suffering from abuse in other contexts or other, you know, adults who witness abuse of children and so on, there are the official windows to which they can go as a consultation place for these kinds of uh, abuse. However, I would like to ask if there is a specific also mechanism in place within sports. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Conceptually, um, abuses in sports also can be reported to uh, Judo Sodan Jo, mm. uh, Children's Guidance Center. However, I don't think it is happening very often, or I would say it rarely happens. Uh, I think partly because of the uh, perception of uh, parents and uh, and then children that their that their um, taibatsu is necessary. Uh, they were they were for they were forced to believe that the taibatsu is necessary to make them uh, strong athletes. Um, that's uh, that's one uh, response to your question, but also uh, because of. Um, but I would say that the sports organizations and also Japanese government has uh, had started a reform in 2013 when there was a, a very tragic uh, suicide case happened. Um, and then um, uh, after uh, in, in this reform, uh, there has been set up uh, some uh, hotlines, particularly for uh, national sports federations. So um, and then also JOC has one, and then uh, J Sport has one. So um, again, um, theoretically, or, or also uh, in some cases in practice, uh, children who suffer abuse can report to those hotlines. But in our report, we investigated ex extensively on those I mean, hotlines. It is very, very difficult for young athletes to access. And because, I mean, first, the system is very, very complicated. Uh, the, the, the section is named uh, as inco incomplete and dispersed investigation systems, inaccessible reporting systems. So, um, so the, 
there is no one uh, easy access, I mean, complaint system in Japan. So all federations set up different systems, and then the, the government doesn't mandate those, reg, uh, those federations to set up a hotline, or if they set up one, what kind of hotline that needs to be. So it's, it's varied. So it's very, very I mean, difficult to navigate. And then also, um, uh, even uh, our student interns, who are really highly educated people, I mean, they investigated into those hotlines, and then sometimes even they couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. uh, it is, and then sometimes the hotline is, uh, is I mean, de 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 designated to a law firm. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult for young athletes to call law firm for their abuse. Um, and then also um, the, the, the website says that there, um, yeah, I mean, and then also um, it is very difficult for athletes to report their own abuse to their own sports for uh, federations because it can, they fear retaliation. Um, and then so JOC or JSPO, they are not the national federation themselves. I mean, it is good that those kind of, I mean, other organizations have hotlines, but they, but their website says like, I mean, for, for example, JOC, they only accept elite athletes. And then for JSPO, they, in the website, they says that uh, they may they may share their I mean comp, I mean uh, complaints with the, their own federations. So it's I mean it's it's very very I mean anyway very difficult uh, for for athletes reports uh, I've used those uh, national federations as well. Um, and then it is not no one. I mean we have interviewed f more than fifty athletes, um, and then only one person knew about those, this system. <laughs> so um, so overall. Um, Really, the complaint uh, mechanism of, of Japanese sports is not at all functioning. Mm. Yeah. So that is why Human Rights Watch is calling on uh, uh, truly independent yes. so remedy that's, system. Yeah. That's why we are calling on the Japanese government to set up a, a safe a Japan safe sports. I mean, mm. Japan Center for Safe Sports, because I mean they can they should be uh, there should be one channel for complaint, and then they should be accessible. I guess if, if my son came home and said he had been hazed or uh, hurt playing sports in school, um, I would just go down to the local police station and report the coach. Is that an option? I mean, under the current law, the coach yeah. could be prosecuted, right? Yeah, but you know, as uh, she <laughs> widely pointed out, uh, uh, you know, the the problem is, um, uh, you know, to what extent it's being it it, it can be exempted yeah. uh, due to the sporting context, uh -huh. right? So. Uh, so that's the difficulty. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have a, a question from an online uh, uh, caller here. So this is from, um, his name is uh, Aaron Miller. And he is with the University of California, Berkeley. And he has written a book uh, called Discourses of Discipline, an Anthropology of Corporal Punishment. Uh, he says, uh, this is a critical question, why didn't your report consult more anthropological studies on this topic, which considered the nuance that is involved in this uh, issue. Uh, he says there are countless Japanese language studies uh, that take a more nuanced look at this subject. Your report doesn't give them the attention they deserve. Do you want to uh, answer that question? So he's basically saying your, your report lacks nuance, I think, as far as I, I can tell from his question, because it doesn't consult mm. Japanese language sources enough. Yeah, I think this is uh, kind of related to uh, what I said uh, earlier. So um, yeah, yeah, I think the the context is really important, or nuance is really important, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, under the, our culture, uh, you know, the yeah context is, is is always important. So we need to uh, read the atmosphere all the time, and the uh, so that is why uh, it's really hard for uh, stakeholders to have a courage to. Uh, report what's actually happening. Right. So, um, but I, I, as I as I said, uh, the few coaches, you know, of course, um, uh, her example is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, it's, it's absolutely, you know, just a violence. However, many of the coaches, uh, you know, don't really have a you know malicious intent. So they just, you know, passionate. Uh, in growing up, good child or good players. So uh, we need to understand the complexity of the problem. So um, they strongly believe that the, uh, they are facing the problem. They are you know, uh, looking at the children really closely. 
and then uh, they think it is absolutely necessary uh, mm -hmm. at the moment. Uh, however, uh, you know, we can hardly say to those kind of believers that the, um, uh, you know, now it's not allowed or the, uh, uh, we need to make a change. Uh, you know, it can be done in a different way. So that's something which we needed to tell them. However, uh, you know, of course uh, we need to make a research, you know, make maybe psychological re research or more uh, kind of a high context type of research. But um, uh, the, I think the, uh, the, the best solution to tackle this problem is to have a dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on one hand, we need to respect them. You know, of course, what they are doing is wrong. However, uh, they don't really have a malicious intent. So we, we need to uh, pay a kind of a certain respect to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, at the same time, we need to, uh, on the other hand, we need to deliver the right message mm -hmm. uh, to, 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 you know, for example, establish cultures. Mm -hmm. So that type of you know, social, cultural context is something which we need to be aware of. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure I'm uh, you know answering the question <laughs> correctly, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, um, I don't know. Nuances are important, but uh, uh, while we are talking about you know human rights of children, so we are really talking about the minimum standards, uh, the legal standards uh, which the government and the adults needs to follow. So um, here, um, I would I am not telling that the coaches have you know malicious intent. Or um, I talked about the uh, kid, I mean I mean uh, child abuse at home or at school, uh, like taibats uh, at school, or harassment at work. Um, these were very big problems. Still, I mean a big problem in Japan. But uh, the policy reform has uh, changed the practices significantly. And then in these cases as well, many of the parents uh, who are uh, punishing their kids or the teachers who are punishing the, the, the students, I mean, they didn't have malicious intent. So I think the situation is very, um, is kind of comparable to uh, the situation of other uh, children abuses, which are getting more attention from the government and then the, and the reform has started. So um, from, I mean, hum, human rights act, from human rights activist view, um, the sports, um, in, in sports also, uh, this reform should be introduced. And if the policy maker sends the right messages and then um, uh, makes a, a right reforms, uh, also in sports, the, 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 the norms and values would change. Thank you very much. Uh, any more questions from the floor? Um, Atozo. I hear Shihiyama from AFP. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, two questions. Um, what, was there anything that surprised you while you were uh, uh, researching this project? You said that it is widely known program uh, problem and uh, this it's, it was uh, socially accepted, et cetera. Um, and uh, you talked about the lack of systematic response. Um, is it a uniquely Japanese phenomenon, do you think, or do you think that it is also a global uh, problem? Um, and also, Doi-san also mentioned earlier, earlier that uh, 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 social awareness about the uh, um, child abuse or domestic abuse or corporal punishment at cl in classrooms have changed, have improved uh, in the past 10 years, 20 years. I wonder if the same could be done here. That um, and, and what, what led to this improved awareness of this uh, uh, child abuse or the uh, corporal punishment uh, uh, or resistance to corporal punishment uh, in classroom? Um, and uh, uh, sorry, the, the third question: If uh, uh, Kobayashi-san's case, case happened today, for example, could it have um, a different outcome? Uh, do you think that, uh, that things have changed over the past 15 years? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, there's three questions. <laughs> That's going to keep you busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I will start. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, what I was surprised uh, doing this research was that the abuse is still very rampant. Um, I was, I was, I was thinking that there may be um, much less abuses these days. Um, although I am already, you know, uh, I'm not a kid at all. So. Um, when I was a kid, it was uh, it was rampant, but maybe not these days. But uh, our research showed that there are even very young athletes, uh, or uh, yeah, very young athletes still experience uh, abuses. And then the second thing I was surprised was the seriousness of the abuse. Mm -hmm. um, you know, their teeth broken, you know, uh, blood in their mouths. Um, these are abuses these days. Um, not we we rarely hear at at home you know abuse at home for example or or abuse in classrooms um, if that happens it's a it's a it's a scandal mm -hmm. but in sports it's it's still happening regularly so um, those you know uh, why how widespread it is still I mean today and also the seriousness uh, was something I was striked. Uh, as a as a activist who has uh, watched child abuse uh, very closely in in the past years, um, and then um, so about the systematic response, um, I in also in this report we talked about the international uh, movement for safe sport, and then uh, all. I mean, responding to their own, I mean, domestic uh, crisis. Uh, U.S. has, as uh, Yamazaki Sensei said, um, we we talk in our report about the uh, U.S. Uh, Center for Safe Sport, or uh, U.K. has a similar uh, system. Canada has one, um, and then also uh, IOC has started their own reform uh, to uh, encourage their partners, I mean domestic partners, to uh, to start reforms. So um, so there are serious reforms uh, in other parts of the of the world to tackle this problem. But uh, Japan has been hasn't been uh, in, has, has been part to those uh, counterparts. So um, Japan starts to need uh, needs to start now. Uh, in order to one of to be one of the countries who can be proud that, that they have uh, responded to this crisis uh, before the, before the uh, Olympic Games, um, and then about the Kobayashi son's case, it's very difficult to, of course, tell what would happen if the situation is different. But uh, uh, but if there is a serious, I mean, but if there were serious reforms uh, in Japan, and then the coaches were informed that their uh, taibatsu type uh, techniques are illegal, and then if they are uh, instructed by law, and then the uh, response has been uh, responses to other coaches has been serious. Uh, he would have informed that that this would end his career as coach. And, and then therefore he wouldn't, I mean, it is a, it is a, a good opportunity that uh, he wouldn't have uh, resorted to that technique. I, th I think a lot of people will be astonished that the coach who, um, who hurt Kobayashi-san's son is still not only uh, working, but coaching children. That's right. kind of amazing, no? Right. Yes, that's also one of the, one of the uh, issues we have uh, closely investigated on, and then uh, in this report, uh, we have one uh, chapter saying impunity for abusive coaches. So because uh, because the, we, Japan doesn't have you know a uniform uh, uniformed uh, standards for uh, for uh, I mean children's protection, um, therefore they don't have uniformed standards. Um, the Japanese government have, doesn't have uh, uh, standards to. Uh, discipline coaches, so it varies uh, to, on federations to federations, and then they are very soft. Hmm. Okay. So if you look at the uh, UK's uh, child protection system, so that type of coaches cannot, you know, coach anymore uh, in other sports. Right. So yeah. Right, right. Just um, a question that came to mind, which I wanted to ask you earlier, is is, uh, is judo an outlier? I mean, it, there are a lot of injuries in judo. Um, and sumo obviously is another sport, isn't it? Which is, which has a lot of violence. Um, and whenever we do stories on sumo, we hear the same 
uh, kind of responses from coaches and commentators, sometimes even from you know foreign commentators, they'll say tough love is part of the sports, right? Um, would, would that be correct to say? I mean, it, those are the worst, are they? The judo, sumo would be the worst examples, but uh, there are others. Uh, I can say I can say that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Sumo is um is 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 more kind of a complex one, <laughs> you know. It's uh, of course it's a uh, it's a sport, but um, it's not just a sport. So. Um, yeah, it's a really kind of a culture. There are a lot of a cultural elements mm. associated with it. Mm. Uh, however, yeah. So uh, as you 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 have me, you may have seen, uh, you know, there have been a lot of uh, corporal punishments mm. uh, in uh, uh, in uh, in the context of sumo. So yeah, I can mm. say it's uh, one of the worst, mm. Uh, mm. you know, sport. Mm. Um, final question. So presumably the. If the Olympics are cancelled, which some people think may happen, does that affect at all your strategy uh, going into the next year? I hate to ask, but I do have to. <laughs> yeah. Would anybody like to answer that question? Oh yeah. Well, well, well uh, you know, if I may answer the, the question, uh -huh. it's absolutely not. It's uh, the strategy is there, and the, uh, even even though uh, e you know the Olympic is cancelled. Uh, we need to, you know, take advantage of this opportunity to leave the legacy after 2021. Mm -hmm. So now the attention is there uh, because we're going to have Olympics. So now it's the best chance to do it. So that's the context of this report. Uh, is that's my interpretation of the uh, report, right? So yeah. yeah, I completely agree with you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we have one more question here, if you don't mind. It's from a um, uh, correspondent for BBC in Turkey, BBC World Turkish. Uh, can you elaborate on the abuse, sexual abuse of uh, especially young female athletes, uh, where the intention is definitely not educational? So this is a good point, isn't it? Some of the other um, coaches can get away with saying, well, this is tough love or this is part of the sport, but sexual abuse uh, obviously cannot be explained away that way. And, and just as context, we did have that major scandal in America with Larry Nasser, mm -hmm. uh, who was systematically abusing uh, gymnasts, wasn't he, for many years and wasn't caught. Um, so it's not an exclusively Japanese problem, of course. Would you like to just comment on that last question? Yeah, sure. Well, of course, um, uh, there have been a lot of problems about the uh, sexual harassment. But, uh, you know, uh, it is even more difficult for female athletes to say something about it. Uh, they fear it's, uh, it's kind of a shameful right. uh, to say such kind of thing. So, so we really need to encourage them to speak out. I think the uh, uh, yeah this is a really good timing to encourage them, right? And by having a really good uh, remedial system, so we the remedy is important. Right. So they have to be protected. Uh, they, you know, they of course uh, you know up until now in order to do this they need needed to sacrifice their career, mm -hmm. right? So but uh, you know we we need to uh, you know establish a better protection system mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would add that uh, out of the 381 survey respondents, uh, 24 years and younger, uh, we had uh, five reports of uh, sexual abuse. So female athletes. Yes. Okay. Um, and then, um, so um, compared to uh, physical violence, the number is very little. And th therefore, uh, our reports focused more on physical abuses. However, we believe that the uh, as uh, Yamazaki Sainse said, that the sexual abuse is the most difficult uh, abuse to report to. So we don't believe that uh, we do not know whether this number represents the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah the reality uh, on the ground. So uh, so uh, we particularly believe that there, it is important to set, set up an independent administrative body to report uh, comp uh, report abuses. Uh, 
if if there is one uh, independent and then com uh, effective uh, body to report to, um, uh, it will be much easier for uh, sexual abuse survivors to report to. And then I believe that, like the case in the United States, uh, I, I understand that the U.S. Uh, Center for Safe Sports is flooded with um, complaints, uh, particularly on uh, sexual abuses. I believe that there are also in Japan, uh, it will be uh, more cases reported. Uh, it is currently the situation is very difficult for uh, sexual abuse uh, survivors to report. Yeah, right. just just one thing. Uh, you know, the, there is a problem, uh, what we call a grooming uh, problem. So they don't really want to, uh, in female young athletes uh, don't want to believe that the, uh, it's a sexual harassment. Uh, you know, because they have a really close relationship with the coaches, and the uh, you know due to the uh, its intimacy. Uh, they don't want to believe, uh, you know, they are sexually harassed by coaches. So that's the, it makes it really difficult. Right. Yeah. The, just to, so there was another part to that question. This was, it was by Ilgen, Ilgen uh, Yolomaz, by the way, that's the name of the reporter. Uh, she also wonders if anybody, any of these coaches have ever been brought to justice. Has anybody been prosecuted in Japan? Sexual abuse any kind of abuse? Any prosecuted, kind of abuse? yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, there are... I mean, there are some uh, cases where uh, the abusive coaches were brought to justice and then uh, punished, I mean, uh, criminally punished. However, for example, the, uh, the very uh, famous uh, case, 2013 uh, basketball uh, player suicide case, um, that's the case which uh, brought the Japanese government and then the uh, sports organization to start uh, reform, uh, which we... Uh, which we concluded that it is not, it was not successful. However, um, but that coach, I believe, uh, got like uh, one year and a half yep. or something. I mean, yeah. sentenced with uh, a suspended, suspended uh, right. suspension yep. of the sentence, so yep. he didn't end up going to jail. Right. So uh, it is uh, like uh, Kobayashi-san's case. I mean, the prosecutor dropped the cases, mm -hmm. and then if I mean, only a hundred, very, very, I mean, few mm -hmm. cases can end up in the courts. But even in such a uh, you know, few cases. Um, mm -hmm. It is very the punishment. It is very low mm -hmm. uh, because uh, because I think that the judges are hesitant to hesitant to to really accuse the coach because the, they also believe that the coaches do not have malicious intent. Right. Right. Well, uh, thank you so much. Is it a very quick question? No, yeah. It has to be really quick because we're out of time. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> あの、確認ですけれども、あの、小林様の件ですが、民事裁判を起こしたんでしょうか。起こしました。あの、賠償金のはありました。はい、ありました。はい、わかりました。はい、ありがとう。So that was just a clarification question to confirm that Ms. Kobayashi did indeed have a civil suit and there was compensation issued within that case. Well, thank あ、すいませんどうぞ。いいですかしてこと。あの、英語のホームページを私たちの会は持ってます。で、その中に過去のあの、とにかく新聞記事に載っている死亡記事を見つけ出して全部英訳してホームページにアップしています。今53件アップし
Thank you very much. Well, I've just checked, and um, yeah, the the um, the Japan Judo Accident Victims Association website is it, it, it is in English, and it is regularly updated. The last post was the 20th of uh, July. So uh, thank you very much for pointing that out for people who are writing stories. Uh, well, thanks so much. Uh, it's a disturbing topic, and I feel we could have given it a lot more time. And that extraordinary statistic, 121 children killed. Uh, playing judo. I've never heard it before. It really is disturbing. Uh, so thanks so much to uh, Kanai Doi, Japan Director of Human Rights Watch, an old friend of the club, of course. You've been here many times. Thanks so much. Keiko Kobayashi, uh, Japan Judo Accident Victims Association. Uh, Takuya Yamazaki, uh, sports lawyer, executive committee member of World Players Association. And we should not forget, of course, Mary Joyce there, toiling away at the other end of the table. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, as always, for your uh, smooth Rolls Royce translation. It was uh, <laughs> wonderful as always. And as is our tradition, uh, we award you honorary membership of uh, the club, and we hope you'll come back maybe next year and update us on the situation. Thanks, Dak. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.